Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to look at creating or generating stock labels from within SAP um, using Crystal Reports and based upon a document that we have in the system. So we have a SAP database here and we have a purchase order on screen. So the background is in this uh, company, when we receive in these stock items and there are uh, quite a range of products here, there's I think about 24 items on this list. Uh, we need to produce labels to stick on the boxes so that it's easy for us to identify the items and uh, the contents um, with a standard size label uh, which we can place in a particular location on each box. So there's a few different ways that we can do this. Um, once we've generated the actual purchase order, the first step is we want to, of course, send the purchase order to our supplier. So we have uh, a purchase order, a printout or a document layout available here. So I'm just going to preview that to screen. And so that's what the purchase order looks like, the company logo up top and uh, who the supplier is and a listing of the products and quantities and prices, etc., on the purchase order. So when we receive these stock items in, uh, we need to generate these labels. And there's a few different approaches we can take. So the one that I've gone for here at the moment is that we have a, a, lay, a layout uh, available and there's a few different options here. So there's a large label format. So essentially this is a label which is four inches wide and six inches long. So approximately um, 10 centimeters by 15 and it contains details uh, about the, uh, the stock items. So in relatively large text at the top, I have the item code. I have the supplier's item code down the bottom, and then I have description of the product um, in the middle here. I'm also keeping track of page numbers here because some of these parts, this one in particular, comes in multiple boxes. So when we sell it to the customer, it's ultimately one product. It's to go on, on the, uh, the, the um, vehicles here, Citroen Berlingo or Peugeot uh, partner. It's a bulkhead and it comes in three boxes. So this is page one, or as we see up here, part one of three. We scroll through, we have part two of three, part three of three. And then we just move on to the next product on the purchase order. Now, um, you may notice that this isn't the first item. So if we go back to the, the bulkhead there, we notice that it's not the first item on the purchase order. In fact, in this case, it's line six, or it's the fifth item on the PO. And I'm indicating that down here, telling us that it's line five uh, item or record one from that list. OK, <clears throat> the um, objective here is that we can produce three labels for this one product. So how do we know or how does the system know how to do that? Well, if we drill into the actual product itself, we find we've created some user defined fields. So I've created these user defined fields which I've called um, label notes, large text one, label notes, small text. Uh, uh, one and uh, notes two large and small text and even uh, notes three large and small text so for some of these products we may need as many as three labels for others we may only need one or two so in each case then we have uh, the user defined fields and we've populated it to say whether we need information on um, one two or three labels and whether we want that information to display in relatively large text or smaller text we also have a flag here to say whether the label size is going to be large or small and how many actual labels we want to produce. So in this instance, uh, for this particular product, we want to produce two small labels and there's only one label type necessary. But we produce the two labels so we can stick it on either end of the box so we can read it from um, a rack easily. Um, in other instances, then we actually will have a situation where we will need more or, or less or more or fewer labels uh, on a particular product. So if we just have a quick look through. So this is something where we want um, two labels because there's two parts to the product. So part one and part two. And we want text to appear in both large text in the main body of the, um, the label and small text uh, beneath that. And it's a large label format and there will be two of them. So essentially we produce two of this label and two of this label. So we'll see that in a moment when we preview again. So if we come back into the item and if we just go and run the preview once again, we'll see we have a few different options here. So the latest iteration I have here is um, the large label format version 301. I produce that to screen and as is the case with the, the bulkhead, it comes in three boxes. It's one product, but it comes in three boxes. So we have part one of three, 
part two of three, part three of three. Now, there was no small text necessary on that label. If we go on to the next product, we'll say that we have both the large text and we have smaller text that we want to appear at the bottom as well. We also have the supplier's part number down here, and we're trying to indicate to the um, the person in stores who's going to attach these labels a, that these labels come as a set. So this is label one of two, label two of two, etc. Okay, we actually find that uh, in some of these products, and uh, in the case of this VG, VGUR007, so if we just find the 007 item, we'll find that we need to produce two different labels, but we need to produce two copies of each label in a large format, which is exactly what we have when we look at this. We have, um, starting from there, we have one and two, so it's part one and part two, and then we go again, part one and part two. Okay, so we count then that we have actually four pages needed in this context. Now, along with having these large labels, we also have small labels. So if I just do a preview again, and we look and we see that we have the small labels available. So these labels are um, about uh, four inches wide and um, an inch and a half or two inches deep. And we produce these on a Dymo printer. So if I just go to the actual print settings here, we'll see that I can pick up on my um, my Dymo printer. There we are. And we just print them out if, if we wanted them. So as things stand, that all works reasonably okay. We can print the purchase order document to send to the supplier. We can print our large labels and our small labels from the purchase order. It's well. It's important to uh, I suppose recognize that prior to implementing SAP, uh, if the customer ordered these products they would have to go off to um, a word template and a uh, write in or type in all of the details for all of these labels and produce them it could easily take an hour to actually generate uh, the volume of labels required for this one purchase order what we can get it down to now however is we can actually do uh, along with having the default layout which is just a purchase order here there's another option within sap called a printing sequence and what that amounts to is we can actually go into the system and say we want to generate a printing sequence, which I'm calling here all stock labels. And if I edit that, I actually have three different layouts uh, set up here. So we're saying that when we generate the purchase order or choose to preview or print the purchase order, we want to produce a label in a, a large format, a label in a small format and a purchase order document. And we can send each to a different printer. So in this instance, we're sending the large label to a Zebra a label printer, printing the four by six, six by four label. Uh, and then we're going to a Dymo printer as well, which is hanging off the back of a user's PC just through a USB uh, cable. And then our purchase order is going to whatever the user's default printer is set to. So if we change their, our default layout here to this all stock labels 201, just set that as the default for our current user. Just save that down. Once we look at the purchase order now and we click on the preview button, now this will take a little bit longer because in actual point of fact, it's going to try and produce three different labels to three different printers. So I'm just previewing it here at the moment. Uh, I could have just clicked on the print button and uh, provided the labels are all set up, it would go off and print the three different uh, documents. So it tells us here that all pages have, are previewed. So let's have a look. We have our purchase order. We also have a large label format, or sorry, this is the small one I've picked. So it doesn't look very small, but when it prints out, it is quite a small label. And we also have then the uh, large label format, which we can just pull over here for a moment. So, through this exercise, we've gone from a situation where we could spend an hour producing all of these labels within Word down to a state where we can actually produce the three documents in under a minute. And each is set to uh, the relevant or the appropriate printer. Uh, we could simply go to the purchase order and click the print icon and walk away from it and it would produce all of the labels and the, the hard copy of the purchase order, which we can then put aside until the stock actually arrives in. Now, in this instance, we're doing this based upon the purchase order because the customer wants to have the labels on hand when the stock arrives. We could easily have done the same exercise based on the goods receipt, PO. Um, so we could just have it activated so it pulls through from there. So 
these are, I suppose, just options for us in terms of uh, what we want to do and how we want to print our labels. We can still go back and uh, do a preview and print any one of the documents, but I think having it set up that we're printing all uh, labels, and I'm saying labels, but this is actually printing the purchase order now as well. And again, we can just say whether or not we actually want to, um, to turn that on or off within the print sequence here. We just go to manage layout, print sequence, edit, and if we don't want that label or that, that uh, layout produced any longer, we simply just remove it from the, uh, the, the list, just uh, right click on it here and um, delete the row. Save that down, we're just producing the labels once again. Okay, so I hope you found that useful.